October has come once again, and that means that the time has come for us Dungeon Masters to start concocting a bone-chilling Dungeons & Dragons experience for our players. And so, what the hell? Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Oh, I better get back to work. It smells kind of funny. Cat, did you poop in the vent again? What is wrong with you? Who is the litter box for? I'm gonna scrub it off all over the place again. I don't have time for this. What's the story, Mother? You've been infected with an alien life form. Right now its body is forming inside of you. Well, I'm gonna be a mom? Well, well that's kinda nice. And within a week it is going to violently burst out of your chest. Wait, what? What? Wait, what the hell? I'm a YouTuber. I didn't sign for all this. What, what am I even doing here? It was in terms and conditions of your Google account. What? No, it wasn't. According to the log entry, it took you 1.43 seconds to read six pages of the agreement before you accepted it. <sighs> Shut up. Okay, so why are we having this conversation again? Before your inevitable death, you can serve your final purpose to the corporation by participating in a playtest of the recent alien role-playing game and sharing your feedback on Loots and Dice channel. Well, I like role-playing games. It's gonna be a nice last thing to do in my life, I guess. What the hell? Where are the dice? You know what? It was a very fun experience, and it suits the Halloween spirit really well. Tighten your seatbelts and I'm gonna tell you all about this game. A game of Alien normally takes place on the frontier, the sometimes lawless region of space linked by the settlers to the old west of the United States. Barren planets are being terraformed in order for the colonists to be able to farm, mine ore and fuel, and in turn provide various space truckers with jobs to do. Space stations such as Anchor Point serve as a neutral staging ground for expeditions into deep space. Sometimes neighbors don't get along, often requiring the colonial marines to step in and restore order. The frontier is an area intersected by several nation-states, Three World Empire, consisting of the former United Kingdom, Japan and several developing countries. The Whale and Yutani Corporation itself is a result of the formation of the Three World Empire. The United Americas, created in the early 2100s to compete with the expanding Three World Empire, the United Americas was formed by the merger of North, Central and South America into one nation. This is where the colonial marines come from. The Union of Progressive Peoples. It is a powerful socialist block of systems that control a vast but resource-poor sector of space. Formed from the coalition of countries that includes Russia and Vietnam, the UPP is the only government that is not influenced by corporate concerns a fact that sometimes puts them in opposition to Whale and Yutani. The Independent Core System Colonies The ICSC is a loose conglomerate of privately owned worlds. Each colony in the ICSC has its own government, many of which are corporate owned. Although nation states dominate the stars, it is important to note that the real power lies in the corporations that exist across them. The moment in time to which all the descriptions in the book refer to is set roughly three years after the events of the original movie trilogy. Those events, as well as the existence of the Xenomorphs, are only rumors, and only in some 
some places, but some colonies are freaking out, understandably. Of course, nothing in the game stops you from setting your campaign in any point of timeline, which by the way is provided here in detail. As a matter of fact, I think if you want to, you could easily ignore most of the Alien franchise features and run your own space horror game. Because that's what the game mechanics aim for. Suspense, constant feeling of danger and paranoia. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Most role-playing games can be played as a one-shot, but in Alien RPG the developers have defined it into a formulated game mode called Cinematic Play. It is designed to emulate the dramatic arc of an Alien film. It emphasizes high stakes and fast and brutal play. There can be conflict between player characters and not everyone is expected to survive. In fact, everybody can die and it will not necessarily be a TPK in its classical meaning. A cinematic scenario is something that is promised to be regularly published by the Free League in the years to come. For now there is one separate separately published scenario called Destroyer of Worlds. There's also Chariot of Gods that you can get with the starter set, and one tiny scenario can be found at the end of the core rulebook, and it's meant to be a brief taste of cinematic play. A typical scenario has a three-act structure similarly to a movie. There are usually five pre-generated characters with particular agendas for each act, and not all of those agendas really click with each other. You might happen to play as a douchebag willing to sacrifice everyone for their own safety, or even somebody worse than that and sometimes not everyone is who they seem to be. I appreciate the job done by the designers and writers with these scenarios. They are structured in a very clean, easy-to-run manner. For the most part, everything is where you expect it to be. First you have the what's going on section, then the player characters, the NPCs, the map, the description of each map section, and finally the events. This is the part that I like the most. The events are not tied to anything other than the current act. There's a whole bunch of separate events that you can trigger at any time you see fit. Some of those events are mandatory. And once each mandatory event in the current act is played out, the second act begins and you gain access to the next list of events. I think it's a very clever design. Then you have a featured monster exclusive to the scenario and finally player agendas that you can copy and hand out to your players if you want to. Another interesting mechanic that makes cinematic play worth a shot is story points. A player is awarded these points for following their character's agendas. Story points are attached to a player, not his character. A player can accumulate up to three points and can spend them to gain an automatic success on a check, even in the following completely different scenario. The campaign play is your typical campaign with rolling a character and having a long narrative over several sessions. No matter if you play cinematic or campaign play, any game of Alien is based on three key themes – space horror, sci-fi action and sense of wonder. They are described in the book and you can stick to one or create a mixture. Classes in Alien RPG are called careers, and there are nine core careers to choose from. Your career choice will influence your four attributes – strength, agility, wits and empathy. The 12 skills, of which there are three for each attribute. Your gear and starting talents, which resemble feats from D&D. Time in game is tracked using three separate units, depending on the situation at hand. Those are rounds, turns and shifts. Their durations are roughly 5 to 10 seconds, minutes and hours respectively. Distance and speed are quite abstract too, and you will generally refer to them as short range or long range, using an action to move from one zone to another and stuff like that. I really enjoy the recent tendencies in RPGs to play with levels of abstractions, as in my opinion the narrative side of the game really benefits from the lack of specifics. But if you're a tactical player, I think the given rules are sufficient for a more tactical play, if you pay close attention and stick to them very strictly. Skill checks in Alien RPG are rolled by gathering a dice pool rather than rolling a single die. At certain points the GM will ask their players to make a supply check. Also, no need to track a lot of numbers, it's all rather abstract. Just make a check and see whether you're stressing out so much that your air supply runs low, for example. Now we've come to the most prominent feature of the Alien RPG, in my opinion, stress mechanic. It is mostly there for short effects, in combat for instance, but it can also cause permanent mental traumas. Overall, it's a neat storytelling mechanic that really fits the setting perfectly. How it works is some situations in game will add stress dice to your pool. While it makes the check easier, it increases your chance to panic. If you get a face hugger, which stands for one on a stress die, you have to make a panic check and see how your character reacts. One cool example of how you can end up with a stress die in your dice pool is you can push your skill check. That means that anytime you fail a check, you can choose to stress out and try again once. Removing these dice can be accomplished by short rests and drugs. 
Chapter 6, Gear, has cool weapons and vehicles and devices that all bear that retro-futuristic spirit in them. It concludes the first half of the book, which mostly covered specific rules. A Hard Life Among the Stars chapter shares info about hypersleep and faster-than-light engines, communications, media and entertainment on the frontier, what it's like to live that life. There are also detailed descriptions of spacecrafts and space stations, with a few examples followed by space combat rules. Chapter 8 describes your job as a game mother. It gives quite a few good GMing advice, as well as some alien-specific information that you should know. It has some really cool paragraphs like Three Stages of Fear, which tells you how to hold your players in suspense, the structure of cinematic scenarios, how to build those three acts upon which your story will sit. Chapter 9 and 10 describes the briefly mentioned governments and corporations in detail, as well as systems and planets. Chapter 11 deals with all kinds of alien species. The game incorporates the lore of the new Ridley Scott movies, so the engineers and their genetic accelerant, or a black goo, is a thing here. You'll find info on their technologies, biosuits and architecture. Neomorph and a classic Xenomorph are also present with all of their development stages. What I really like about running these beasts is while you are the GM and in control of the general flow of the story, when it comes to aliens there are tables of their possible behavior in combat, specifically how they attack. And I really think it kind of captures their alien and bestial nature. It's kind of like even in the hands of a game mother they still carry a little bit of randomness. There are also four different species that inhabit various other worlds never seen in the movies. Chapter 12 explains campaign play mode in detail, provides stat blocks for various NPCs, as well as a description of Novgorod Station, which can become a cool location for you to explore. Finally, the book provides us with a one-shot called Hope's Last Day, which literally features the last day of Headless Hope Colony from the movie Aliens. Ah, oh, it's not a good time. Wait, is this already happening? She said I had a week.